We're going to do a Tactica on uh, Battle Conclaves. This is a special HQ unit for the Sisters of Battle. It's also in the Grey Knights Codex. Um, in the Sisters, they're HQs, but they don't take up anything in the Force Org chart, so they're, uh, they're kind of like an elite in that way. They can never be scoring, um, but they are denial units. And there's three components to it. There's Crusaders, they're Death Cult Assassins, and uh, there's Arcoflagellants. And I'm going to talk about all three and want to give you some ideas on how to make them more effective uh, because this was like a Death Star unit in 5th uh, in edition. Those Death Cult Assassins with multiple power weapon attacks could just slaughter everything, but uh, they, they kind of got uh, downgraded in 6th uh, edition, but I'm going to give you some ideas how to make them better, give some tactica, and uh, I'm going to run through each each different person in their own uh, their own little section here. Um, in terms of your battle conclave, you can take up to ten individuals. So uh, um, I would suggest you probably don't want to take more than nine, uh, unless you're going to not put a special character with them. And the reason I say that is this unit does have a problem moving, so uh, you're going to want to probably put them in a transport. And the the highest transport. Uh, you could get for the sisters is a rhino, which could carry 10 people. So your battle conclave plus their HQ that's probably attached to them. Um, so, anyways, uh, on to the crusaders. Crusaders, uh, these guys come with a 5 plus armor and a storm shield that gives them a 3 plus invulnerable save, and then they come with a power weapon. Um, Looks like a power sword on this guy, <clears throat> and all of the models from GW are going to have power swords, but the FAQ and the White Dwarf Codex says that they're armed with power weapons, not power swords. So, um, these guys, these guys, you probably want, you probably want a couple of them, maybe three for your battle conclave, and the reason you want this is the way that wounds are allocated now in 6th edition. You want to put your Crusaders um, on the edge of the conclave when they're say moving so if these this is your conclave and they're they're moving towards the camera here you want the crusader in the front because uh, any shooting attacks coming in at him you want you want his three up invulnerable save to uh, to be taking those otherwise you're relying on either characters that have no save uh, just feel no pain or a five plus so he's he's really uh, he's there to, to take some hits. Now he, he does get some attacks and um, with a power no, with a power weapon, um, but this guy's got a power sword. He's gonna get he's gonna get his base one attack, and if he charges, they'll get two. He's he's strength three, so he, he's pretty much like a, a guardsman with a power weapon. So he's pretty good uh, for for sucking up some of the injuries in the squad. You don't want too many of them because uh, every crusader takes away from your death cult assassins. And uh, yes, I realize this is not a GW Mini because uh, you can get these uh, Sisters of Flame, or I think that's what they're called, from uh, War Machine, Privateer Press, at half the cost of uh, a Death Cult Assassin, and, and they're both women armed with power swords, so I went with a cheaper model, and I actually think slightly better looking. Um, anyways, so Death Cult Assassins, this, this is the main combat model for uh, the Battle Conclave. These girls, or guys, but GW made them girls, so I, I chose to take a equivalent female model. Um, their weapon skill 5, so they're pretty pretty likely to hit most opponents. They, um, they're armed with two power weapons. Um, they, have, they have no armor. They just have a 5 plus and vulnerable save, which, which works in shooting and in close combat, so that's pretty nice. Just talking about their stats. This has a strength four, so uh, this is the only unit that's going to have a strength four um, in terms of a, a mass number of individuals because they uh, they're dual wielding and they have the, the two power weapons. They're they're going to start with a base of uh, two attacks plus one for the double second weapon, um, and they're probably going to hopefully charge so they may get four attacks per round. So these girls, weapon skill five, strength four. Uh, and wielding power weapons, when they go up against marines, they just slaughter them. Uh, 
they go up against Guard, they go up against Tau, they go up against Eldar, anything like that, they pretty much slaughter them. And that, that carries over 5th edition, that's what they did. 6th um, edition, they're still pretty good at it. They do have the disadvantage, though, if they go up against anything that has an armor value too, um, those power swords just don't cut it. And so they, uh, they, got, they got sort of reduced in effectiveness there. They also no longer ignore Feel No Pain, because those power swords uh, in 5th edition, previous edition, if you ignored armor saves, you ignored Feel No Pain, but here, not so much the case anymore, they're just uh, strength 4, which would take most of my unit would be them. Arcos? Arcos, uh, I don't want to tell you in a second why I don't think you'll ever see them again. Um, they're strength 5, they have no save, they have feel no pain, so um, against things which are strength 5 or less weapons that wound them, they're going to get a 5 plus save, basically. Arcos uh, get 4 base attacks, but they're not considered to be dual weapon wielding. These two flails you see um, are considered a weapon, according to the description. It means that they're going to get a base 4, maybe 5 attacks on the charge. Um, strength 5, so it, it's pretty good. It can definitely damage a vehicle, uh, but it's not a power weapon, it's just a weapon. Um, their weapon skill 5, so they're as good as the Death Cult Assassins there. Um, and, you know, they were, they were actually pretty good when you could wound allocate to them and things. Um, I definitely saw a point in taking them. Now, however, uh, I don't, because I don't think you need the Strength 5 Arco Flails, and, and here's why. This is, this is, I think, the best tactic, by the way, for this group. These two um, are armed with power weapons, not power swords. So, if you have a Crusader or a uh, Death Cult Assassin, you could take a model that um, had a power weapon that was not a power sword, and by the rules, you can take a... You take two weapons, they don't have to be the same. The model only benefits from one weapon in each round of combat, so if you have a sword and an axe, or a sword and a maul, you have to pick, am I using the maul this round, or the sword this round? And here's what I've done. Slightly cheesy, but uh, it's, it's well within the rules. I took, uh, I took Beastmen, which I'm going to call Abhumans. Abhumans are uh, allowed to be in the Guard. They're certainly allowed to be Imperial. And I've made Abhuman Crusaders, so each one of these guys has got a, a shield. That's his Storm Shield. And then they, they have their own power weapons. We have a Power Maul, Power Axe, Power Lance. Um, and how do these work? A Power Axe gives you AP2. So Bye bye Terminator. Uh, it also gives you strength plus one. So at that point, that uh, Crusader will be strength uh, four. A Power Maw gives you strength plus two, AP four. So it doesn't ignore things like uh, Terminator armor, but at strength uh, four, um, he can do some pretty pretty much uh, can do more damage, and he knocks his opponent down to initiative one after they take a wound from it. So that the Power Lance works just like the uh, the Axe in that it improves their strength, but it's it's AP3 on the uh, on the charge. Um, I, I actually just modeled that one. I don't I don't know how often I'll actually use it. And for the Death Cult Assassins, did something similar. So we've got our girl with swords, but alternatively, you could have Death Cult Assassins with uh, twin dual wielding um, other power weapons. So you give them a power maul and a power axe here, and what does that do? That means I'm AP2, uh, strength 5 with that power axe, and I, um, I'm AP4, strength 6 with that power maul. So this guy is stronger than an arcoflagellant. Um, he's got an AP on his weapon. Um, he actually has two weapons, so one of them uh, is the same strength as an Arco, does hit at initiative one, but it's AP two, um, and he would get three base attacks, four on the charge. So I, I think this is an awesome option if you just want to have an Arco equivalent, take it something with a power maul. And this guy, he's got a power sword, 
and a power axe, which means if I'm going up against marines in combat, I use the sword. I still count as dual weapon wielding, so I get the extra attack for that, but the, the sword is AP3, cuts right through power armor. If I go up against terminators, I use the axe. I get a bonus to my strength, um, and it ignores armor. So right there, the, the Death Cult Assassins got much better. Uh, and that's completely as written in the rules. It says they have power weapons. They FAQ'd all swords to say uh, weapons. So, you know, that's totally legal. And I just don't think you'll see the Arco anymore because you could take a Death Cult Assassin and arm them with something that gives them better strength and an actual AP value, plus a bonus of knocking opponents down to initiative one. And, uh, and you don't have to worry about the Arco because the Arco has no save. The uh, Death Cult Assassin at least has a five up invulnerable save. Now you'll say, that's the same as feel no pain most of the time, and it is, but here's where the uh, battle conclave really shines. Let's say you've got your battle conclave, and um, on their own they're, they're okay, but I know this isn't Uriah, but let's say you stuck Uriah Jacobus in with them. Um, they're going to get a bonus attack, because Uriah gives everyone a bonus attack. On the first round, they'll have Hatred, so they're going to reroll all misses. It's called Righteous Rage in the Sisters Codex, but it's Hatred. Um, and then, um, Uriah also gives his entire unit Feel No Pain. So, uh, it, he, he gives them Feel No Pain, which means they're as good as Arcos to begin with, uh, because they get the 5-up Feel No Pain, and they have their 5-up Invulnerable Save, which works against everything. Um, and with the Storm Shield guys in front, those guys had a 3-up invulnerable save and then a 5-up feel no pain. So with Uriah in it, it's a pretty solid squad. If you put uh, Arch Confessor Kirnov in a Death Cult Assassin uh, Crusader mix, they'll be fearless because uh, Uriah is only stubborn, but the, the, the Arch Confessor is fearless, so he would make them a, a pretty strong unit. They're not going to run. That is one of the concerns you have with uh, these, is that they will run if they, they lose combat. When they're in this combat, you really want to be able to inflict the most amount of damage on round one. And the only way to really assure that you've got that is to have someone with Righteous Rage. I've got the example of the just Confessor here, straight up Ministorm Confessor HQ, but the, the named HQs are even better. So they're going to let all these guys reroll their misses um, on the first round of combat, and that's really critical because after that first round, you're going to start taking some pretty heavy losses if you didn't kill a lot of your opponents right away. And, um, you know, once you start losing these Crusaders, you start losing your 3-up saves. Once you've lost all your Crusaders, you're down to, to guys with a, you know, a 5-up invulnerable save. Sure, that's good, but, uh, because it's invulnerable, <laughs> but it's a 5-up save, so you're only getting it one-third of the time. And if you have Uriah, you're going to get feel no pain. But, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on that, so I, I'd say you want to have someone with Righteous Rage so that when you charge in, you can maximize the chance that you wipe out your uh, opponent's unit, um, or at least knock them down to a really small, manageable size, uh, otherwise this unit tends to fold pretty quickly. Battle Conclaves do, um, do have the benefit that uh, they, they can allow independent characters from the Imperial Guard to attach. And, and I don't think the Lord Commissar does you any good, but the uh, Primaris Psyker, when he's attached to this, if he has Biomancy, um, there's a good chance that a couple of his Biomancy powers are really going to either boost the effectiveness of a Battle Conclave, or, um, you know, with him attached, they're going to be able to kill a lot of people before they even get to them. So that's an option to think about. Um, of the two independent characters that you could attach from the Imperial Guard Codex, Lord Commissar, really wouldn't help these guys too much, but uh, the uh, the primary Psyker could, to some degree, help them. So that's the summary. I, I think it's uh, it's pretty short, but uh, in terms of a, a, an awesome assault unit, the uh, the Battle Conclave is, is a good way to go. Uh, it has, I should say, it has one disadvantage. Um, in the Sisters of Battle Codex, there's no assault vehicle, which means... Um, you have to put them in a rhino, drive them down the battlefield, get out, stand around and get shot for a round, and then assault. Or run them down the battlefield and uh, hope that they, uh, they don't get shot down on the way. I guess the alternative is hide them in your deployment zone and use them to, uh, to prevent your opponents from uh, landing and trying to take an objective. And that would work really well in, say, Crusade 
or a, was it Emperor's Will, with the one where there's only two objectives. Um, but in uh, multi-objective games, they're a little less useful. Anyways, that's the uh, the Tactica. I, I think the uh, the new boost with the power weapons really makes these guys uh, a little more viable. Um, and, uh, and hopefully I'll start seeing more of them out on the, on the battlefield.